What is up, everybody? Happy Wednesday if you're listening to this on the day that it comes out. If not, happy day that ends in Y. One fun thing for you guys is that we have launched long-term mentorship and signups are no longer open. But one, it is going really fun. It's going really great. And we're just having a good time diving into our mentees' businesses, which is really fun. They're getting lots of traction and clarity. Right now, we're working on branding and like who they are, uh, which is really fun because I think that determines everything else you do in your business. One of the things we're going to talk about both in our mentorship, but also today, we're going to give you a little bit of insight, is having a conversation with a former guest, Mike Morby of Morby Photography out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And he is the guy for pricing and profitability. The main thing for this episode is going to be getting your money right and making sure you know where all your dollars are, how much do you spend, what does it cost to live, where I know budgets are scary and spreadsheets are not that fun, but this is something as a business owner, you can take a few hours and it's going to help you for the rest of your life, really. For the, You could do this for your personal life as well. And Mike is just the guy on it. To put things in perspective, I've taken his workshop twice because I was in two different stages of my business. One, when I was first starting out and barely making any money. And then recently, I took it this year uh, or in 2018, actually, this past year, when I, you know, things have been going well. We bought a house. Things are, we're moving and grooving. Uh, but I wanted him to kind of look over my numbers, look over my books, see what's up, talk through pricing. It's always good. Your your systems and your structures are only as strong as, you know, somebody looking at them and grading them, if you will, uh, especially an expert. So without any further ado, really fun to have Mike Morby on this, this episode. It's going to feel a little bit nerdy and it's going to be a two-parter, but it's going to be really beneficial for you. And I would encourage you to sit down with a sheet of paper and dive into this. So without any further ado, here's Mike Morby. Mike, it's almost the end of 2018, and how's it going, man? It's going well. Yeah, it's uh, it's my first year of actually not feeling uh, overwhelmed because of uh, having all the extra help. So, yeah, <laughs> overwhelmed and broke. <laughs> it's been a nice treat to uh, yeah. to see everybody pulling their hair out in the Facebook groups, and then I, you know, feel pretty calm and relaxed uh, for the first time ever. It's pretty amazing. Sure. sure. That's no awesome. offense to all of you out there struggling to get your edits and your calls done. <laughs> Literally today, I was like, I have all my couples and all, yeah, any weddings or engagements I have finished, but I do have one big corporate event that I did a few weeks back and I'm finishing that up. But it's like, you know, I have to kind of organize the event and really properly keyword a little bit more than I normally would um, just so it's organized for them. And so it's taking a little bit more time. And then it's like, 3,000 images that we're exporting. So it just, you know, like it's one of those things where I have to set it overnight and just be like, okay, we're done. Like we have everything we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And you don't have any hair, so you're not pulling anything out anyway. So <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of that too. I was like, yeah, Mike doesn't even have any hair. So how's this? Yeah. Even more? Gosh, I'm showing my age for sure. Yeah. I was tying my shoes on the way to a wedding a couple months ago and Carrie <laughs> comes down the steps and goes, man, you're really bald. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's a that's awesome. of wisdom that's true that's that's exactly why we're having you on man i uh one thanks for coming on again and then two yeah. um yeah man so we we've talked to this last time but i've taken your workshop twice just because i thought it was that awesome and you know both at different stages of my business both you know kind of when i was in the beginning and when I was kind of starting out and really getting into like what is branding and then, you know, how to get your money right, you know, and and making sure that your profits and pricing and everything works uh, together for you. And then, you know, I took it earlier this year where things have gone well for me. And, you know, I've shot now I'm a little bit more experienced. We've shot 150 weddings and we're actually making money, which is great, Uh, which shout out to the people in December who are nervous about next year. We've been there. Um, but uh, so, you know, and I've loved it both times and I thought it was super useful because the things that you teach about pricing and profitability aren't, you know, they're not not complicated, I would say. Like, you know, they definitely take a little bit of time to dive into, but you don't have to think of 
you know, we'll dive into this in the episode. You're not thinking of like competitor research or market research during these times. You're literally saying, hey, what are your expenses? What do you need to make? And like those kinds of things. And so I absolutely love that. And so uh, I just want to know, like, have you always been this like profitability guru, if you will, <laughs> like uh, your business? No, I, so I, I shot my first wedding 17 years ago, which uh, is crazy to think that it was that long ago when I was in college. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of what I teach in my workshops has just been um, one through just learning what it means to be um, in business for myself and self-employed. I, I went full time in 2012 and there's nothing like being full time, you know, we had a mortgage and two kids. Now we have a mortgage and three kids and a dog um, and employees, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it's nothing, there's nothing like going full time to make you realize, wow, like I have to figure all this out. Um, so, so that really started to develop in like 2012, I would say. And I, I started teaching workshops in 2013. And once, and you're probably finding this with your podcasts, uh, and you do mentorships and things like that. Once you start teaching others, you really have to dig into like, what do you believe yourself um, before you can really start teaching others? So I would actually say my workshops have probably taught me the most about business because I needed to um, really know uh, where I stood on a lot of things before I could help and guide others. Um, you know, in that. So yeah, and it's a compilation of a bunch of other like reading podcasts, um, you know, all, all these different things have kind of come together uh, to, you know, formulate what I believe about business and, and how I approach business. Right. So now do you think when you're, you know, coaching people and talking about, you know, pricing profitability, you know, like what comes first? I feel like a lot of times, at least in my experience, you see new photographers start up and, you know, they, you see, we see this in Facebook groups all the time and it just says, how much should I charge for such and such? Yeah. Um, you know, should pricing start or should your kind of profitability start? And then like, how do you get that started? Yeah, that's one of the chicken and the egg sort of things, uh, scenarios. It, it depends, I think, on where the stage uh, of the business is for that photographer. Um, so if somebody's far along and they're, they're shooting 20, 30, 40 weddings a year, you know, stuff like that. The first thing I'll, and if they haven't really figured out pricing, a lot of people will just throw a number at a wall and hope it sticks. Um, hey, this looks good. I think this is what I should charge. And you know, that's how they formulate their pricing. Um, so for people in, in that scenario where they, this is just what they charge yet they're, running a successful business from a number of booked weddings standpoint, I'll, I'll usually encourage them to start with um, figuring out their personal budget. Like what do you need uh, to live on? And then, uh, and this is hard to, you know, without like slides or PowerPoints or things like that, it's a little harder to explain, but you know, so that's, that's the start is what do you, what do you need to live on? What are your expenses? Uh, you know, what do you want to put towards retirement or groceries, your mortgage, your rent, your car pay, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And then um, the second part then would be, what does it take to run your business? Um, fixed expenses, like expenses that don't change whether you're shooting one wedding or a hundred weddings, like business insurance. The insurance doesn't care if I'm doing a hundred weddings or one, you know, it's going to be the same or internet, things like that. And then your flexible expenses, which are job to job. You know, if I'm doing a hundred weddings um, and selling albums, you know, that will change if I'm doing a hundred weddings at expense or if I'm doing one wedding. Um, and then through those two things, what does it cost for you to live? What does it cost for you to run your business? Then from there, then you figure out, okay, I want to shoot 40 weddings a year. And this is how much I need to make to reach that on those 40 weddings. That's a very basic like way of going about it. So that would be the person that has a lot of weddings, um, figuring it out that way. Then with the people just starting out, I feel like through Facebook groups and online forums, 
they're usually encouraged, sometimes bullied <laughs> into charging these ridiculous rates when they're just starting out. And then they're not able to book any weddings because they don't have the portfolio. They don't have the experience and they're charging what they want to make rather than what they're actually worth at that moment. And I usually really encourage people starting out to just shoot. Um, it's not a very popular standpoint in our industry, but you know, I've, I've, I tell people, you know, shoot weddings for free and just charge them for what you have to rent the gear for, or shoot a wedding for $500 or, you know, things like that to build your skill set and your port. Cause there's a lot of couples out there that don't, want the world's best photographer. They just want it documented and they're on a budget. So, you know, just build your experience first and then start to build your pricing up after that. And for, for that person, it's usually just like a break even scenario just to get the experience. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'll start depending on kind of where they're at in their business. No, that makes sense. I think one of the things too and I I only recognize this more now as I've wanted to expand, at least in my business is like, you know, when you're first starting out or just your business in general, the reason you start with like your personal expenses is because it's like, hey, you have to provide for at least one employee, you know, yeah. at least in some manner, whether you're overlapping, you know, still doing a full time job or, you know, trying to take this full time. And a lot of people forget about that. And like you said, it, it like you can break even and say, hey, like I only rented five hundred dollars worth of gear i was paid five hundred dollars you know it magically works out um but oftentimes and you you feel like you're working a lot and you're left with nothing and you can't pay your mortgage or you can't pay your health care or your netflix bill etc and you're just like up a creek without a paddle um yeah I, I don't know i think it's um it's one of those things that you just made it sound so simple and i'm like i wish we could all just get this uh we all just need to go to a morby's workshop obviously uh because it's pretty awesome. But yeah, the the biggest thing that I, I've learned from you and just this whole process is kind of like, whether you like it or not, like you just have, because even you have to know your numbers, because at this stage, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people just are not, they're not talking to an accountant. And even the accountant's not going to speak it in the way that you're going to see it, you know, like, like in a spreadsheet and whatnot. And you know, your pricing and packages and stuff like that. And I don't know, it's just super valuable. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it, you had mentioned, um, you know, in the, the beginning of like, I don't price myself fully according to competition or the market. Now, I think that's important because I don't want to undervalue myself, you know, according to the competition in this area. And then I also don't want to overprice myself. Um, but, you know, one of the most important things is knowing like what's your personal expenses. Uh, there's a, a forum. I used to be on it more often before, but not as much anymore, but it's called Fred Miranda. Have you heard of that online photography? Yeah, forum? I feel like that's uh that's where photographers went to vent before Facebook existed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now that I'm in Facebook groups, I don't need it as much. Um, but so you'd have like a New York city, like Brooklyn or Manhattan photographer giving advice to somebody that lives in the Midwest. So when you're living in New York city costs is through the roof for cost of living yeah. and in the, you know, the Midwest, they're giving somebody advice in the Midwest and saying, Oh, you're charging too little. Well, the person from New York city doesn't know that market doesn't know their living expenses. You know, even for me, uh, we were driving down to my in-laws for Thanksgiving and we're passing this new, it's about 10 minutes south of us. It's these new homes that are going in and they're townhomes. So they have like a postage stamp of a yard and probably the same square footage as we do. Um, and the townhomes start at the same price that we bought our four and a half acre property. Mm. So you just go 10 minutes south and the cost of housing doubles, even a little further south than it, and it triples. Um, so even somebody that's living more, you know, I'm outside Philadelphia. So somebody living in the main line might be paying $1.5 million for their half acre property. Um, so their cost of living is going to be way higher than, you know, me who's living, you know, out of that, that area. So 
it's really, it's really, really hard to compare yourself to others when it comes to pricing. You just, you really have to know what, what are your numbers? What are your goals? What do you need to live on? What do you need to book weddings? Um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So knowing your own personal numbers is really paramount to figuring out your pricing. Do you think, you know, if it seems like a lot of people don't know, um, you know, like you, if you, once you finally do look at your numbers, yeah, people don't realize the difference between like markets. Like if somebody's paying $3,000 for their mortgage versus somebody who's paying $600 for their mortgage, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to be vastly different. Like that changes everything. That's like, you know, 10 extra weddings a year that that one person is like, oh, well, yeah, if, if we made the same rate, I have to, you know, overcompensate. Yeah. Um, but if you live in Iowa or something like that, and uh, you can even too, like, you know, one of the big things now with not now, I mean, people have been married since for a long time, but you know, if you have a, a partner or something like that, you know, double income, you know, you can also help out with that too. And some photographers say, Hey, I only want to take 10 weddings and you know, it's, you know, maybe I want it to be all profit or I, I'm going to be less profitable than maybe the big guys. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you, you can skin this any way you want, as long as you know, the, you're not lying to yourself with the numbers. <laughs> yeah. And for some people as well, like, I don't, I don't know the exact cost of living of Manhattan or LA or, you know, some of those expensive areas, but it might not be realistic for somebody to um, be a wedding photographer and make it, you know, financially in that market. You know, they might need photography and another job to make ends meet. It's yeah, it really is different. For, for everybody. Yeah, no, that's smart. I think it's like, it's one of those things where I, you know, both you and I, I I'm a big fan of people trying and I think anybody can make it happen uh, if they work hard enough. Like I think if, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. I never thought you would do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, again, it's, it's one of those things where if people, you know, if you get to three, four, five years in and maybe you've done the right things, you've gone to the workshop or you've tried, you've had other people, you know, we'd say like counsel, you've had counsel on your business and you're still just not able to make a profit. Then yeah, like maybe you have to maintain another job to have this kind of fun, fun gig, but they can also make you more flexible or kind of like you talked about with people starting out. I'm a big fan of that too, of saying, Hey, just, just shoot for free or like try and second shoot, you know, just be one, be proactive and like carry somebody's bags and, and like just be, you know, offer yourself and continue to offer yourself. And, um, uh, it's the same as like any other field too, where it's like, if we had a friend who was kind of handy and he's like, yeah, he's a pretty good like plumber or he can like whip up a, you know, a garden base for you or something like real quick versus like a full stage contractor. And, mm -hmm. um, and we all have those people. We have one person where we're like, Hey, could you come take a look at my, you know, appliance while you're over for movie night? And then you have the person, the company that you hire and it's, you know, a hundred bucks for them just to come out and then yeah. you're going to pay a little bit more. And, um, I think there's nothing wrong with that industry as long as people are like honest about that, you know, and you know, one is a business and like Morby photography is a business with people and staff and a team and all that stuff. And then it's like, yeah, but of course there's going to be a, a new college kid that's trying to get into it or, you know, maybe just feeling it out and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, we live in such, as you know, um, just such an on demand culture as well of, you, you know, mentoring so many wedding photographers and even just I've branched out into mentoring other business owners as well beyond photography. And, um, rarely do you see people just skyrocket overnight or even within a year or two. Uh, there's, there's something to being patient, uh, and working hard and knowing the, I was just coaching somebody recently and encouraging they, they had this ideal of what they wanted their life and their business to look like so they were setting up all of these boundaries but only booking five or eight weddings a year and you know i i encouraged them and said you know maybe in two or three years you can have that lifestyle that you're looking for but like right now you need to do everything you can to grow your business and realize it's not going to be this hard forever, but over the next two years, I'm going to work my butt off. If I get an inquiry, I'm going to drive an hour and a half to go meet with that person if I need to, to get that wedding, knowing that hopefully in two or three years, my business will be stable enough that I can start to have some boundaries. Um, you know, we did that often. I, 
in 2012, I was a full-time youth pastor and I shot 37 weddings that year, along with probably another 20 or 30 family sessions. And, you know, I had two kids, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And life was really, I was doing all my own editing. You know, my time was really stretched thin, you know, but we always look at things as seasons and we know, Hey, if we, if we work on this really hard for a season, it will get better. Um, and so always just encouraging people like put in, put in the work, put in the time. Um, and if you really love doing this and you love business, um, you'll last beyond, you know, the flash in the pan photographers that want it now. That's and one I, of the things. I see that with you, you know, as well. We've been connecting since what, 2010, 2011, something yeah. like that a while. And uh, I don't even know if you were shooting weddings back then or not. I remember seeing a photo that you did of a, a friend of mine that was in a band, Dane. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And yep. being like, dude, that guy's really good. But, um, you know, you've just shown a lot of um, patience and, you know, slow growth and, and you love what you do. So you've lasted and you'll continue to last because you, were, you weren't looking for the easy solution. You, you wanted something stable. I appreciate that, man. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's really fun. You said, uh, I, so I literally think these words in my head all the time, uh, when I'm prone to just be like, I want this and I want this now. Um, cause it's very easy for me, especially I'm, I'm just like, you know what? I want five associates. I want a, a, you know, amazing photo booth business. I want 10 mentees and the mentorship track. And, you know, I want to pay, a, I want to buy a new house every year for the next 10 years. And, and, uh, I'm just like, well, yeah, we don't have to do that now. You know, we don't have to, you know, let's do it one step at a time. And, um, you said slow growth and there was literally, there used to be a photography podcast a long time ago and I, I don't think it's still around, but, um, I forget his name. You probably know a, a teach a man to fish or whatever yeah, his, uh, Todd Reichman. Yeah. And he had Tony on there, Tony Hoffer, who we've had on the podcast and he's a good buddy from the Philadelphia community. And, um, that's what Tony said. And he just said, it's slow growth. Like we tried to just take our time and, um, and now, especially now that I've been here, been shooting weddings longer, it's, that's the best thing. It's so easy to just look at people and say, oh, I have to do everything. Even after a workshop, like I tell my mentees, I'm like, guys, you're going to have more questions after you leave because this is almost like a magnifying glass when you go to like an educational space. And so if you go to the Morby workshop, you know, you're looking at all your numbers and you go, oh, I need to reevaluate some other things in my business too, uh, you know, with this kind of logic. And yeah. I've always just kind of been like, all right, I'm going to take my time. I want this to be like, you know, one built with integrity, but then two just built like built well and built strong. And, you know, I kept my prices really low for a long time uh, just so that I could kind of have demand first. Yeah. And, you know, now I'm, I'm sad because I'm like, oh, well, you know, my number one reason for not booking is my budget, but I have, you know, our goal is 30 weddings for next year and we have 29 and I'm like, all right, well, you know, what's, okay, it's time to try and see if we can expand. And uh, but it's a good problem to have. And I think we did it because we did it slow and we did it right. And, you know, I've gotten more comfortable over time with like being more of myself rather than trying to be like somebody else yeah. and, you know, have a business that, you know, stands for what I stand for versus saying, oh, I see all these other photographers doing that. I should really copy off that. And it's like, well, one, you're going to be a copy and two, you're going to get cheaper results. Like you're not going to make as much as them when you're not who they are. And you're not, you know, fully who you are either. It's like a, a rip off iPhone. Like nobody wants that. Yeah. And it, you know, I think a point you bring up here as well, saying how many things that you want, you know, with the mentor program, the associates, the a new house every year. That's, that's a big, that's a big uh, goal there. Good luck with that. <laughs> not to but live yeah. in just as an investment property, just as investment property. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> I thought you wanted like a vacation home in Colorado. <laughs> no, I'm not that bougie. Either. Gotcha. My wife would kill me okay. if we had to move yeah, every year. That there. But um, <clears throat> what I've what I've also come to find over time um, is to not do too many things at once because I'm not going to do them all well. And so I kind of before I used to shoot commercial and I would shoot weddings and I would shoot families. Um, I would shoot newborns, I would shoot headshot, like everything that came my way, I would say yes to. And I was not doing any of it really well. And my business was growing, but my quality was lacking. And I noticed once I started 
pushing stuff aside and I just focused in on weddings, um, my business became much stronger and I became much better at that one thing, you know, that I was doing. And now in time, we're implementing new things, but slowly so that we can do it well. Um, you know, so I think that's really important, uh, you know, as well. If I had, so we have four wedding photographers and we just brought on a family photographer. Um, but if I had that back in 2012, when I went full time, we would have, we would have sank because we would have been putting out a, a terrible product and, you know, that would have been our name with that terrible product attached to it. But, you know, building over time and adding things over time has allowed us to do each thing well. Um, and you brought up Hoffer a couple of times. I feel he's, he's really good at that. Like he does not, he does not do um, things that he's not really good at. Like anything that he puts out to the world, he's really honed in beforehand, you know, and, and that's kind of how I look at it as well. Yeah, no, he's, um, it's good. Uh, you know, a lot of photographers, it, we get away from the idea of like practice, but yeah, he definitely practices and like, you know, I know that he surveys a lot of his clients or his past clients in his little Facebook group and stuff. And I was just like, all right. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's being a business. It's, it's a lot more real than having, you know, obviously there's our passion, but it, it's having a business, but I want to go back to to talking about the money, the fun yeah, thing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we got diverted <laughs> there. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. No. So, how do you? So, you have your fixed goods, you have your variable goods, um, you know, your costs. And so, your fixed goods are one, your personal expenses that you have. And then the fixed ones might be your business ones, too, where it's like the things that aren't changing every month. So, that's your, you know, your internet bill, your health insurance, et cetera. Uh, maybe you have a studio space or something like that. And how. Once you have all of that, and let's say you did even determine, you know, what you need to live personally, how do you actually decide, like, what your time is worth? You know, like, because you started kind of with your personal expenses, and you might say, hey, I, I want to be a, you know, I want to make $100,000 in profit, where it's just, you know, that's what I'm keeping. Um, is it there that you determine, like, this is what I want my time to be worth, or somewhere else later down the, lo the line? How do you do that? Uh, yeah, there's, there's two, two things to look at. One is, um, what you profit, you know, overall in a year or per wedding is, you know, one thing to look at. Um, and then the other is, so you say a hundred thousand dollars, right? So let's say I make a hundred thousand dollars in a year. Um, but I have to work hundreds upon hundreds of hours to get there. And I'm actually only making like $10 an hour. Um, so yeah, there's the one is you want to figure out how much you need to profit a year and then, um, how many hours of work do you need to get to that? Um, and then that would actually be what you're talking about there. Your, how much do you need to charge per, per hour? Cause I think a lot of people think of the profit, but they're not thinking about, and we've talked about this in the workshop with that spreadsheet. Um, they're not thinking about all the hours that they're putting in to get to that, um, to get to that number. So does that answer your question? Yeah, no, totally. That, that makes perfect sense because I think when, you know, one, it's, it's hard for me even now as a business owner, we've, we've talked about profit and I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's any money that like Adam can spend not on business things, um, you know, which is kind of true, but it's also too, yeah, what do you want to make? And, you know, the, the biggest thing there is like determining how long it takes you to do your job. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and we don't think about those things. But it's like, how long does it take you to edit email communication, et cetera? And those things, you know, they'll shift kind of like we talked about fixed and variable. You know, if you have 10 weddings, you might be able to say, hey, it only takes me 30 minutes per wedding total to manage my emails with these people. Uh, but if you have 50 weddings or 60 weddings, then, you know, your email amount is just going to be less. And, you know, if you're if you're not good at tracking, I, I'm I'm a big fan of like the time tracking apps. There's an app called Timing uh -huh. for Mac, and it's like my absolute favorite and it'll it's you know our brains are liars like we'll be like oh i spent like nine hours in lightroom today and you're like no it was mostly maybe three and a half which is still good but you know we, yeah the rest was spent on facebook <laughs> yeah exactly like we were in a facebook group and it, it felt like work um you know but yeah that's that's one of those things too that people you know i love the one line from uh, gary vaynerchuk and i say this all the time but it's like don't be romantic about how you make your money and mm. people think it, people think it's about being like 
skeevy or being nervous about, you know, being on camera all the time. But it's also too like, you know, don't be romantic and say, oh, it only takes me an hour a week to email all my clients. And it might not. And uh, what I found too is just cr- trying to dive into, all right, how long do these things take? Can I systematize as much as I can before, you know, you either need to hire somebody and figure that out. And, you know, like, what have you learned? You know, because I know now you have a big team and you have an editor and stuff like that. Like, what was Mike's life before he had an editor or before your wife worked for you, you know, and, and managing all of that? Yeah, thankfully, um, it's only because of Carrie, my wife, that I have uh, a life or a good, you know, photography business. So when we got married in uh, 2008, she found misspellings in my contract. I think I spelled customer wrong uh, <laughs> in the signature line at the bottom. So thankfully, I've always had her, um, you know, helping with all that stuff. But I'm sorry, actually, I, I missed. What was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> got derailed with Carrie. Yeah, no worries. That's freaking hilarious. Uh, guys, if Mike can do it, you can do it. You can spell customer wrong and still <laughs> make it happen someday. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, no. So we, um, I just wanted to kind of know. Oh, what was life like before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you guys had a big team and kind of, you know, what was that breaking point when you said, hey, I need to hand this off or, you know, I need to get an editor or something like that? Yeah, well, the interesting thing is I, um, I always overworked before. And so I was building, I was, I was doing the youth ministry thing, which took up a lot of time. Um, and I was also building my business, you know, at the same time. And I was, uh, working during the day, editing at night, gone on weekends, Sunday afternoons, doing family. There was really no buffer at all in my life. So it was, it just felt kind of normal. And then, When I went full time in 2012, I thought I was actually going into retirement because I was like, this is going to be so easy. Um, And I realized once I went full time that my my personality was just to overwork. I filled all that time with other things. um, And I would be up until 2, 3, 4 a.m. editing. There There was absolutely no boundaries in my life. So... My first, my first thing was to bring on an editor and I, you know, I had somebody off now it's in house, but I had somebody off site editing the photos and then I would review them. Uh, but that was a huge load off to have somebody doing a lot of the grunt work. And then when I would get it back, I'd only have to look at it for a little bit and do some adjustments. Um, and as I started gaining the time back from the busy, the busy things, um, you know, the busy work, I was able to then pour that more into uh, building a sustainable business, having a more healthy, um, balanced lifestyle, things like that. And I, I've actually over time, and, and a lot of it's due to my wife, she, she highly values quality time and boundaries. And if it wasn't for her being like that, I probably would still be working myself to the bone just because I don't, I don't really know when to stop. Um, but yeah, so I started realizing that bringing on help decreased profitability, but getting that time back uh, was so valuable for pouring into parts of my business that were really important. You know, from the workshop that I partner with probably about 20 or 30 venues. And if I was doing all of the work myself in, in-house, I'd have no time to build those um, you know, relationships, uh, outside of my own business. Um, and you know, I mentioned that the profitability, once you start bringing on help, the profitability comes down. Um, and I can't really explain this without my spreadsheet, but profitability comes down, but my hourly rate goes up because I can now focus on, you know, other things that bring in more, more business rather than sitting in front of a computer uh, and editing all of the time or designing an album, um, you know, a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, totally. Is yeah. there a, so for me, if you had gotten to see, you've seen a, a lot of my business, but like only this year did I finally, you know, find somebody that I could trust. And, uh, I handed off my weddings, uh, to be edited by somebody else. And nice. how's that going? It's, uh, at first it was really weird and it was, 
you know, it's intimidating to to let it go, right? Because you, as business owners, we're like, nobody's going to, no one, and this is the truth, no one will take the ownership that you have. Yeah, but, until you get Dan Fossey and Leah Gallo. <laughs> <laughs> but they will be more qualified than you and they'll have more focus. And that's that's mm-hmm. the main thing is that like they it's again, we talked about somebody, you know, the handy guy versus the actual appliance company, you know, like the people who are good at it. And um, yeah, it's actually been really great. The as we it took a few weddings to get used to different preferences and just kind of giving feedback. And it's actually gone really, really well. And the beauty of it, and I, I, I feel weird even saying this on the podcast, is like my post-wedding workflow is, you know, only a few hours. And um, it's great. You know, like once he sends back the images, we're delivering more than we ever have before because I'm I'm kind of culling a little bit less, uh, you know, like, oh, man, I'm going to have to edit all of these. It's, I'm like, no, somebody else is going to edit these. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And so I think that's kind of fun and not that the number of images is like a big deal, uh, but it does feel nice. And so, you know, what? we're going to include, you know, a little bit more that, you know, maybe we wouldn't it wouldn't be the most curated, but it's going to make our clients happy in a, in, a, in a new way. And so that's really fun. And um, yeah, just having to not have that overwhelming thing, because say, especially for me as somebody who's still shooting uh, unwisely. But I mean, in August, I shot six weddings in 10 days hmm. and um you know, that's a lot of editing to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you want to, even if you say you take a, a month to turn around the images, you still got to hustle on all of those, you know, because yeah. you have to t- turn out those six weddings. And so um, it's been really helpful to have an editor and um, it's been really fun. It's been really cool. And now I, I think we're finally getting into the groove. So hopefully 2019 will be better. And uh, I knew for me, the biggest thing was to like stick with it and just say, you know what, let's not say on one wedding you know, you're not even close. Let's say, hey, let's try it on 10 weddings and see how close we can get. And, um, you know, now I feel like we're really hitting our stride. So it's really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can and, I, can I add, add to that? Uh, yeah. So a couple, a couple thoughts that come to mind as you, you know, say that sort of stuff. One is if you're, so if you shoot those six weddings and you have to turn them all around in a month and then you probably had more shoots, you know, after that, that you had to add to your workflow. If you're, shooting that much and if you are having a lack of sleep um and you just feel really you know strung out from just working too hard it's going to show up in the quality of your product that nobody edits well if they're editing until 3 a.m uh, maybe there's some people out there but i i look back on edits from a few years ago and you things that i would be delivering in the middle of the night and they're nothing compared to what we're delivering now because we have that extra help and I'm not working until 3 a.m. when my eyes aren't functioning um, anymore. And I would really like with what you're saying with the editor, I, I, for people out there listening to the podcast, the, I think step one, if somebody doesn't have it yet, step one would be try out an editing service, um, you know, offload that first. Uh, and, you know, see how it goes. But the more that you can offload that stuff. So I, my, maybe I shouldn't be saying this on the podcast either, but (laughs) my in front of the computer per wedding um, is about an hour and 15 minutes. So that includes the call and, and the edit because of the the quality help that I have. Um, You know, and I obviously have the wedding meeting and the wedding day and stuff like that, but actually calling editing and blogging um, is about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes per wedding. Um, And then the other thing as well is like you said, you just got to stick with it. Like nobody is perfect right off the bat. And if you have an editor that is really good with implementing feedback, um, you know, keep, keep going with it and give them feedback. Cause again, in this on demand culture, people want it perfect from day one and they're not willing to, equip and train. Um, and I think that's something thankfully that I think, you know, we've done well is we, you know, I believe in people and, you know, I stick it out, uh, with them and I equip them and I train them. And, you know, if after six or eight months, it's still not working out, then, you know, something needs to happen. But, um, you know, people need time to progress. Malcolm Gladwell in, uh, the book Outliers talks about the 10,000 hour principle. 
where it takes 10,000 hours to gain mastery on something. So to expect somebody to get it right within the first like 40 or 50 hours is just not uh, not realistic. Yeah, I, t- I thought that too. Every time I get the wedding back, I'd be kind of like, uh, you know, like this is close, but you know, not as good as it could be. And then I was like, Adam, you've edited probably like a million photos since you've started, like literally a million photos. And my editor, who's a buddy of mine, and he's awesome, and uh, it really works out for him. And, uh, you know, just kind of like his life situation, you know, he's been in the photography game, you know, probably two years, maybe. And, you know, he hasn't spent that, you know, that awful amount of time in Lightroom that you and I have and uh, that Dan has as well. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, let's just what's the teachable moment here? And, you know, how can we help out even more? And it, it's been it's been really cool. And with the point being about this editor talk is that, like, I have a lot more time back. And yeah. it's it's one of those things I think about it all the time. And I think about, hey, could I just, you know, you know, hone down and, and kind of funnel things even more and, you know, still do everything myself just so I could profit more. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. But part of me at the same time is like, you know, we we can grow and see what's going to, you know, this podcast is still just a you know a passion project other than what we charge for mentorship. And so it's like, okay, you know, what can we do to expand and get more hours back and, and just know our numbers again. It's one of those things where it's like, I, after taking your workshop, I want to like look at my numbers every six months and just be like, Oh, is this what I, what I actually want? Is this what we're actually committing to too? Like, you know, one, what you say you're going to spend in a year on your business you have to stick to that. You know, you have to stick to your your budgets and, you know, how much you're going to spend on gear and stuff like that. Well, how do you encounter those things or like, you know, a camera breaks and maybe it went over the budget that, that you had kind of set in your mind? Yeah, thankfully, we have um, years of data, you know, f- financial, you know, QuickBooks data to, to really know our costs month to month and year to year. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, what we would do is, just put aside um, for each wedding. Uh, we don't do this anymore because it complicates things too much, but for each wedding, we would just put things into buckets. So we'd have like um, an album. So we get the, the deposit and the balance. A certain amount of that would go towards income tax. A certain amount of that would go towards um, albums. A certain amount of that would go towards um, repairs that might come down the road, you know, or things like that. So we'd actually have each wedding and we put money into different categories. But now over the years, we know fairly well what we're spending um, year to year and month to month. So rather than having a, a very inflated budget, we, you know, for albums, we used to actually have enough money that if everybody came to fulfill their albums, we'd be able to pay for them all because we'd have it all in the album budget. But now we're like, okay, you know, we need, I don't know how much is in there because Gary does the finances, but maybe it's like, we need $10,000 in the album budget. Um, and, and we know like that that's enough to, to get all of the albums, you know, that people are going to come and do, and we're constantly, you know, keeping it at a certain number um, there. So that like when January hits and everybody's snowed in wanting to do their albums, um, you know, we have the funds to do that. But I think a big mistake that I see people do is they're, they're spending money they don't have. And we used to do that. You know, I, I'd book, a, I'd get an email and they would say, Hey, you know, we want to book you for your, as a wedding photographer for our wedding, I'm sending in the deposit. And I would say to Carrie, and this is way back. I say, Oh, we got a thousand dollars coming our way. And we'd actually go out and spend that money before the check even came in the mail. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was bad. It was really bad. And so we were, and I was working full time. So like the photography was kind of viewed as like extra. Sure. Um, but yeah, I see that, you know, all too often. And, you know, I know some people they're, they're full time and then the winter hits and they don't know how they're going to make it through the winter because they haven't proper properly, um, you know, budgeted throughout the year. They, they see their bank account really fat in September, October, but they forget things are going to dry up come January, February, March. And you have to, we actually look at our fiscal year as um, May 1st to April 30th. So we're always looking at what do we need to get to April 30th or what do we need to get to May 1st? Mm. Um, so when we're looking at our budget and our income and when all this money is coming in in the fall and 
basically between May and November. Well, this month though, we have 12 weddings, December, which is, or 13, which is crazy. But, you know, we're, we're not just looking at it as we have all of this money. We're looking at it as this needs to last us till May 1st, um, till that starts over again. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's really important is not spending money that you don't yet have, or also not looking at your bank account and saying, I'm filthy rich, let's go buy a new car. <laughs> and in January, you're eating ramen noodles and living in your car you know, <laughs> that you just bought. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I could convince my wife and be like, hey, can we get a Tesla, please? We can live in it. You know, yeah, we'll uh, our bank account. Yeah. I'd be like, can we pay for it? So uh, last money question and just profit question for you. Uh, just kind of wise business sense. Are you doing now that you kind of have a you've been in business a lot longer? You have a team. Um, are you kind of do you have like three or six months of income? You know, like business income saved up in the bank. Is that a goal for you? Is that something you think like is important, or is that something you you know have kind of not decided to do? Um, it's something that we've always wanted to do, <laughs> but um, we we don't have uh, three to six months. Uh, currently, but our, our goal is to have um, $100,000 in the bank. Mm. And uh, I think, I don't, I don't know what we have right now, but I think we have like 60 or something like that. But we need, sure. you know, obviously we need it to get through the winter. Um, yeah. But that's a goal that we're still working towards. Um, we've never gone into a winter with uh, a surplus of basically we've never gone into January 1st with enough money to make it to May 1st. But thankfully, you know, January deposits come in or I do, you know, we always make it to May 1st. Yeah. But I'm still waiting for the day where more like December 1st will hit and we have enough money in the bank that if we didn't bring in any more income, we could make it to May 1st. Um, Mm. But right now, the, the crazy thing is with growth comes expenses, you know, so yeah. we have Carrie and I are obviously on salary and then we have Corey, Dan and Leah are all on salary. And, and so our expenses are up over 40,000 a month right now. So, whoa, <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, you know, the, the larger you grow, the more responsibility there is because with them being, we wanted to give them salary for stability. Uh, yeah. In, in their own lives. And so we, you know, January, February, March, we don't have a ton of weddings yet. We still have, you know, the same amount of expenses. So it's a little more unique than maybe some other scenarios out there, but sure. It would be the goal to, to have, to have that much saved up. But, um, yeah, we're, yeah beyond we're, we're not, we're not there. Hopefully, hopefully one day we will be. Totally. 2019, Mike. Let's let's just get it. You know, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll make it all happen and uh, we'll make it rain. Sorry to anybody that just slammed on their brakes and Mike said 40K a month in expenses because uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big deal. Awesome, man. Well, uh, where can people go to find you and find all your fun Instagram? And you've been blogging recently, thanks to Dan, which was great. And I've always advised you to keep, <laughs> you know, you've been, you've been keeping always up. always blogged. <laughs> it's just better now. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people go to find all your favorite stuff? And uh, is there a workshop coming? up that people can know about or what's the best way to, to know about when your workshop is coming up again? Um, yeah. So morbyphotography.com is my website. And on there you see, um, yeah, well, I don't have any workshops uh, planned as of now, but I'm thinking in the fall of this year or maybe in the winter of 2019 or 2020, somewhere around there. So there's, there is a sign up uh, for that on there. Um, but yeah, just more be photography, Instagram, you know, stuff like that. And I, as you know, I love just talking business and I really enjoy um, helping newer photographers, especially that navigate, you know, the things that I didn't have when I was, you know, trying to figure this out. So I'm always happy to have people shoot me an email or ask questions or, you know, talk over things. Um, it's to be honest, I, I enjoy business, I think, more than I enjoy photography. I just I love talking this stuff. So hopefully after that episode, I would encourage you guys to just take like two minutes and just go through your credit card statement, gather up all your expenses for what you what you pay per month, what you pay per year, get your money, you know, kind of like out of your brain and, and onto paper or onto a Google Doc or something like that. Like make sure you know your numbers. How much do you cost? What does it cost for you to live wherever you're at? And ideally, how much do you want to make? And we, like we said, when you're starting out, 
this might not be as easy for you. Like you might not be profiting as much as possible because things cost money. It costs money to start a business and most of them don't make a profit within the first three to five years. So totally, totally normal. Just keep going. If you have questions, feel free to ask me or reach out to Mike. I would encourage you to listen to the next episode, which comes out next week. And Mike and I are just going to use the data we have from here to determine how should we actually price? You know, should it be two packages, three packages, four packages, eight packages, 10 packages? Should it be $10,000 a collection? Which one do we do first? All that stuff we're going to talk about in the next episode. So I'd encourage you to listen to that one. It will be awesome. Uh, one favor, I'm going to ask you guys a favor. This is a New Year's favor for still celebrating New Year's. I would have loved for you to go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review if you haven't already. Send me a screenshot on Instagram or DM me. I would love to see that, and it would really mean a lot. I, I, I know it sounds really silly, but in the podcast world, it, people ask for it because it really does help the show get new eyes and, and hit the charts, and so that's just really fun. And honestly, that just feeds my ego. So thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day, and keep being awesome. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.